but I want to say hello to uh, Jeff Francoeur. Many times played baseball in the big leagues for a number of teams, including mainly uh, best known for playing with the Braves, which he has done a lot of broadcast worth. Jeff, as we say hello to you, uh, there's so much to talk about, uh, including uh, your almost uh, signing. Well, you actually, you did sign with Clemson, but you, you, there's so many uh, different tributaries. But first of all, thank you for making time. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. I, I listen to you every day on the way uh, home getting the kids, and even my kids commend you for some of the callers you put up with. So well done. Well, I may just uh, adopt one or two of them while we're at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Uh, there, there's so much uh, to unpack with you, your career, which I, I know you probably occasionally are, are asked uh, to talk about. But I, I do want to talk about something that you're doing now that really uh, has interested us. And, and that's this uh, podcast, as well as your partnership uh, into Pure Athlete. It's a, it's a platform helping young people, uh, as I know you want to do. So before I completely mangle the intent of it, I'll let you explain. Well, thank you. I, I started a podcast called Pure Athlete. It's with um, two other guys, Brad Williams and Britt Lee here in Atlanta. And, you know, I have four kids now, Paul, 10, 8, 5, and 3. So I'm getting into the world of sports and youth sports and really seeing, <laughs> in all intents and purposes, how bad it is. And I know you deal with it from a college level, but it's it's coming on down into the high schools and even the younger age. And, you know, I, I'm a guy that, look, I'm as competitive as anybody, but, you know, we want to give – parents and and coaches and athletes you know the best advice to have a great experience right like you know we've we've had some great guys on Dabo Jay Billis Austin Eckler you know we got Clark Kellogg coming on next week and just different people in all different sorts of sports and how they got there and really just giving good advice to kids to have fun um you know to to play play as hard as they possibly can to compete you know Reese Davis came on last week and I love what he said he said teach teach the kids the value of winning, but not at all costs, especially at a young age. And so uh, we, we've done this. We had a live show um, in Atlanta with Matt Olson, you know, the Braves home run leader from last year. And so we are coming to uh, Birmingham in two weeks and we're going to do one there. And uh, I'm looking forward to just get, getting the opportunity to kind of share what we're doing. I'm interested because I have some friends who are coaches like you are, and especially those who are in the football realm. They, they tell me that, a lot of parents don't want their, their kids to play football anymore because of the safety issues. Is it, is it like that across the board, or is it is it more isolated to football? I think that part's more isolated to football. Look, I played football since I was six years old. And I will continue to say, Paul, that the lessons I learned in football, the discipline, the work ethic, how to be a great teammate, are things that that's why I let my, my son play. Like, I, I think that outweighs some of the other stuff. But you know, it's answering those questions. You know, we had Jason Campbell on who didn't play organized football till seventh, eighth grade. So I love it because there's so many different ways to get to where you want to go. But more than anything, man, the travel ball these days, AU basketball, the travel baseball, these people are just going all over the place at such a young age. And, you know, one of the questions I love to ask, Paul, do the kids want to do it? You know, if, if they don't want to do I'm a baseball player. My son plays football and lacrosse, doesn't even play baseball because – quite frankly, that's his passion. So you know what, as, as David Pollack told us one time, it's, it's your son or your daughter's journey. Let them dictate where to go. But Jeff, uh, I realize you're trying to help young people, but it sounds like they need to be helping their parents. <laughs> well, and, and that, honestly, Paul, that's kind of who it's for. You know, I coach a 10 U travel softball team and some of the stories that I've seen and coaches, it's incredible, right? Like I teach our girls to compete to have fun, you know, but at the end of the day, man, enjoy it. Enjoy this time that you have together because as I said, man, I, I played with so many great players at Parkview High School. And yet, you know, a lot of them didn't go on to play even at D2 colleges, right? So the it's a it's a small amount that get that chance to to be the next Jalen Hurts or the next Bryce Harper, right? Like it's a small number. And so you want your kids to have fun. You want them to experience a great time and learn a lot of life lessons. I want to ask you about your journey because uh, we had Todd Helton on a couple of weeks ago, right after he got into the Hall of Fame, and and he, uh, you know, he he was uh, torn between baseball and football. Uh, you were a really good ball player. You you committed or even signed with Clemson. Take us back to that moment in time because a lot of young players are great at a lot of things and and they have difficult choices to make. 
It, it was. And for me, I loved, I loved football. High school football is still the greatest time. And it's actually funny, Paul. We talked to Matt Ryan. We talked to Austin Eckler on our podcast. And all of them said the same thing. High school football is still their favorite memories they've ever had. And, you know, so for me, it was tough. But Tommy Bowden was at Clemson. And I still have a great relationship with Tommy today. We have uh, beach houses down in Florida next to each other, actually. So I still see him a lot. And you know, as he told me when I got that opportunity and got drafted in the first round by the Braves, you know, he was kind of like, you got to go ahead and take full advantage of that, man, and go get him. And uh, I'll tell you what, watching, I, I saw that with with you with Todd Helton. It was awesome because I, I admired Todd, the way he played baseball. So happy he got in the Hall of Fame. But here's a guy who's a great football player, too. Obviously, Peyton Manning was there. But I, it's so tough, you know, that it, it, to play two sports at the highest level, man. It takes a freak like Bo Jackson or Dion to be able to do that. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you about both of those one day because I covered Bo in high school and uh, I always felt he was a better baseball player than football player. I, I'm I'm with you and everybody, you know, George, I played with the Royals for three years and George Brett used to tell me every spring training when we talked to him and Bo would come down, he'd say, if he just did baseball. He'd be in the Hall of Fame today if he would have stayed healthy. Yeah, it was it was just amazing uh, how how far he could hit a baseball. Um, so when that when you made that decision, you obviously had an amazing career. But I, as you as you are dealing with young people now and their parents, uh, what are the questions that you get and uh, from both the young people and their, the adults? Paul, the one thing that I fight against more than anything is a specialization in sports at a young age. I can't stand the, the son or daughter that just plays basketball or just plays softball or just uh, it, it's too much. I get you can't play probably three sports at some of these high schools today, like the high school I went to. I played two. I played all three till ninth grade, and then I played football and baseball um, sophomore through senior year. And I always said, though, these people now are specializing. They're doing it year round. You know, John Smoltz talks about it all the time. If you play baseball, your arm can't handle throwing 12 months out of the year. I mean, especially at a young age. And, you know, Dr. Andrews, man, I saw him a couple of years ago and I'll never forget. He said, I can't believe the age I'm starting to do Tommy John surgeries on. He said it's, it's embarrassing. And these parents should be the ones held responsible. And so that's the thing, right? Like there's not one way to do this. But at the end of the day, you know what, man, you got to protect your kids. And I think the way to do that is let them play multiple sports, let them play football, let them play basketball in the fall, you know, or in the winter and then play baseball, you know, like it's just the specialization at a young age, the injury rate is incredible. It's through the roof. You won't believe it. Jeff, you, you were in a unique category because you were elite. Uh, most of us played because we were, we were, it was fun, but now uh, even the young people are seeing what's happening above them, and in college players are making a lot of money. High school has seen this infiltrate into them. How do you? I mean, I realize with your with ten year olds, maybe it's not quite a big of an issue, but it will be very soon. How do you deal with the 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 NIL portion of this conversation as they get older? It's so hard, Paul, because you know Dabo is a great friend of mine, and I am a huge Clemson fan. It's tough, right? Like not going into the portal, not giving some of these guys, you're falling behind. But at the same time, from a father's standpoint and, and from this other stuff, right? Like I respect the heck out of it. And the fact of like, I'm not gonna let an 18, 19 year old kid dictate what I do. And, but again, right, that comes down to the parents. And I continuously say it, if, if you have good parents, if you have good coaches, you know, then most of the time, you know, these athletes are going to turn out to be great people. Look, they should go make money. If they can do it, go do it. I'm all for it, man. But at the same time, you know, at some point you got to want to play, right? You got to have that passion and you got want to go out there and do it. How do you educate the parents, though, in terms of what you alluded to earlier with Jim Andrews and, and I've talked to other physicians and the, the injuries that are happening are, are, are frightening and, and it's not like it's going to get any better as these young kids get older. No, it's not. And that's the sad thing, right? Like you hate it. And the fact that, you know, it's these parents that are putting a lot of pressure on these kids to, to perform, to exactly what you said, to get out there, practice, do this. And that's what we talked about, right? When we were younger, we used to go in the backyard 12 guys, you split up, play six on six football, play basketball, you play for an hour, you'd be tired and you'd go in. 
now you have these practices for three hours. They're so extensive and, you know, kids are getting burnt out. Kids are getting hurt because of it. And so, right. It's a, I mean, U sports is a $19 billion business. You're not going to stop what U sports is, but you can, our goal, the three of us is to try to help educate through other athletes other um, nutritionists, mental health skills, strength coaches to come on this show and, and just try to give parents a, a, a roadmap for your kids to have fun. And as I always say, if you, my dad and mom, I had a brother and a sister older, they worked just as hard as I did. And my sister played division three college basketball. My brother played division two golf. But as my dad said, when I got to 16, 17, they realized, okay, Jeff has a chance to play at the next level. But now these parents are trying to do that at 12, right? And I'm like, come on, man, no one's looking at a 12 year old and, and, and going to sign a 12 year old to a scholarship. So that that's what, honestly, what we're trying to fight against is these people telling these parents, you have to do this or your kid's going to fall behind. That, that's, that is not truthful. An amazing conversation. Jeff, Jeff, many thanks. Jeff Rancor, we, we look forward to continuing this. All the best with your endeavors, uh, with your podcast. And the name of it, is again, is Pure Athlete. We head to the break right now. That was really cool. Uh, there's, a lot more, there's a lot more on that. I have a very close friend who, uh, former, former big-time college coach who runs a, an organization uh, that deals with player safety that is a whole different aspect of this. But we'll talk to him one day as well. We take a break. We are coming back with much, much more. Mm-hmm.